Learning, of course, is something that happens in the brain, and neuroscience tells us how the brain works. So what everybody's holy grail is, is for neuroscience to inform what happens in the classroom. What we are starting to see now is an effort to really do controlled experiments. What kind of teaching is most effective at letting children learn both initially and in a more enduring way? What kind of input, what sequence of learning, what modes of learning, whether children learn best from hearing, from seeing, from doing, from feeling, from interacting with their peers, from uh, just hearing what a teacher or maybe if a computer tells them. That's what everybody hopes neuroscience will speak to. Education at one level is nothing but brain plasticity. Anything a parent or a teacher achieves with a child, shares with a child, uh, inspires in a child, has to go with a physical change in the brain that underlies that learning in parents. And so how those two things meet, this is a physical rise of the brain and the experience at schools and home, you know, is, is an exciting challenge for these coming years to understand. Remember to squeeze, squeeze the top of the eye drop and then put it in? Part of education must be to give every child a better brain, a stronger brain, to actually change their neurology positively so that they can take in more information. What substantially controls their ability to do that is the efficiency with which their brain operates in a very fundamental sense. And those basic skills and abilities are plastic. They're subject to improvement, they're subject to change, they're subject to modification. And if we change them in a positive way in a young child, what a gift. You know, what a positive thing that can be for the child in life going forward. With recent breakthroughs, research is showing that neuroscience offers this key to highly effective learning for all children. Join me at the intersection of science and education as we explore the new science of learning.